the common mistakes that I'm following you are having in in developing the PNID for exercise one. And after that, uh, I'm going to give you some more highlights to approach exercise two. I hope this is not going to be very repetitive. We are going to begin with the common mistake that I found in in the submissions. The first one is we are going to begin with uh, the equipment internals. In this picture, we can see the representation of two towers or columns. So I would like to know if anyone tell me what do you think is missing in these two representations. As I said before, you have to remember to represent vessel internal, like these ones. In the like the trays here for towers or columns are very important. If you have packs, then you have to represent them. As you can see in this example, it is not necessary to represent all the trays, just the relevant ones like these ones related to the nozzles connected to a pipeline. And you also have to describe the number of the tray for reference mistakes and mostly aesthetics, but are important for PNID presentation. I would like to ask you if anyone can identify them. I'm going to show you a detail of one of the PNIDs provided in the course notes to make a comparison. Uh, the first mistake is that you have to avoid unnecessary turns in the lines, like here. You have to try to minimize them. It's true that when you have a PNID with many lines to represent and it's very crowded of symbols, you necessarily have to do terms. But you have to minimize them. In the, in the PNID that you have to develop for exercise one, I believe you have plenty of space. So you have to work out minimizing that. Another common mistake is that valves are represented unproportionally. As you can see here, this one, compared to these ones, are not proportional. The same as these flanges, like this flange here, compared with this. And also this symbol for insulation is very small, and the text also is small. So 